The first story is Libyan elections ended up getting canceled. They were scheduled to be held on December 24th. And anybody who's listened to the show over the past year knows that I, you know, I've been highly skeptical that these elections were going to happen. And in fact, towards the end of November, when they had their filing deadlines and we're talking about having potentially, I think 90 something candidates have filed paperwork and, uh, you know, 20 something had been, uh, kicked off the ballot, including, uh, the, the son of the former dictator of Libya, uh, Gaddafi, uh, his son's name is Saif al-Islam. Uh, it doesn't have Gaddafi in his name, so some people are confused by that. But Saif al-Islam was initially kicked off of the ballot. He's actually, I think, at least wanted for international war crimes, as is uh, another man who I don't know if he actually put his name itself on the ballot, but I'm sure certainly had a pick, one of the major military commanders and men in charge and major influence in Libya, and that is Khalifa Haftar, who despite you know being credibly accused of ordering summary executions and uh, vicious human rights violations being committed by his forces and people fighting in his name and just awful you know um, authoritarian type you know state abuses uh, in you know the areas of Libya that him and his you know political allies control you know he's been able to go to France and get medical treatment in the past couple of years and so I, I mean, there, there's now a whole lot of good actors among the people in Libya who have major power and influence. Um, it, but at the same time, they say they were going to have an election and the U.S. Uh, put uh, and the U.N. put a lot of effort into making this happen. Uh, they set up a uh interim government and you know one of the other issues with this election i believe is the head of the interim government whoever that was wasn't supposed to run for the the election you know once it happened and i believe that the man who's actually currently the de facto interim government head of libya is trying to run and so me i'm not sure what the electoral commission was actually doing with his name but he had you know thrown his hat into the ring and wanted to to run to be the the leader of libya after this election i'm not sure if they were going to call it a president or prime minister or whatever uh december 24th wasn't pit for christmas eve it was pit because that was uh libyan independence day and so you know, they really built up and put a lot of pressure on having the elections on December 24th. And then just a few days before the election, the election commission dissolved the electoral office that was setting up and running the election. And so with that, it essentially shut down any progress that was being made on the election and now it appears that the election just simply won't happen at all uh the the parliament uh the libyan parliament had a chance to act on it i believe on the 27th so you know a few days after the election's about to happen about a week after it looks like it's officially postponed and they also kick the can down the road and don't want to act on this and you know, it's been um, a very interesting year in Libya. There's been some reduction in fighting. And, and part of that was, you know, because there was this pending election. And so uh, what's going to happen now is hard to say. I really want to recommend this interview of uh, my friend Joanne Leone's show, Around the Empire. Of course, uh, she was recently uh, co-interviewing uh, somebody with me uh, that I ran his episode, I think 201 of Foreign or of Conflicts of Interest. But uh, in the past week or so, I, I ran that episode with uh, Thedros uh, Frickamarium. And so, uh, anyways, this interview though, between Joanne is with uh, Giorgio Caffiario. And it's really good. They go into, you know, all the different international actors. And so, if you want a really good background of, like, what the geopolitics are around right now for Libya, which is different. It's not, you know, just the Eurozone. You know, France is kind of out on its own when it comes to Libya. It's not NATO. Uh, Turkey has different positions. Uh, the UAE and other, you know, U.S. Gulf allies, quote unquote, you know, allies is a loose word with those states, are backing as well Haftar, who is at least in part backed by Russia as well, you know, for France as well. And so, you know, the geopolitics of Libya are really complicated, 
And, you know, if fighting breaks out, it could get very ugly very fast. And so Giorgio, I, I don't think really argues that having this election maybe planned but not actually going through is in any kind of way a diplomatic success uh, put on by the UN. But, you know, rather th- this could be setting Libya up, I think, for a I think what he's saying, a dangerous situation go forward if the elections don't happen. Now, that interview did happen before the elections were officially postponed or canceled or whatever the the title is. It, it seems like they're, they're not going to happen, or at least not in the coming months. And so... Um, that's, uh, that's, I, I think most of what I have on the election news itself, uh, the Western powers, uh, say they're still going to recognize the, the authority of the interim government of Libya, which, I mean, they could do that. It doesn't maybe reflect actually what's going to happen on the ground in Libya. And depending on what happens on the, on the ground in Libya, it could be absolutely meaningless that the UN or that, you know, the Western powers are making this recon- recognition, or it could be quite significant if somebody else comes to power and then they're backing a government that has no authority. These are the kind of situations that lead to like sanctions and a lot of humanitarian suffering. So uh, elections in, in Libya, don't don't look promising here um it'll be interesting to see what happens going forward uh Cafiero, uh said that there were some actors within libya like haftar who didn't maybe have the diplomatic or not diplomatic democratic you know the majority of people probably weren't going to support a haftar or a haftar back can- candidate and so you know maybe this is somebody who doesn't want the election to happen and you know what turning to violence or something would do at this point i do want to also point out that the current UN envoy to Libya is an American. I, I forget the woman's name, uh, but she replaced the the man who was an envoy and uh, took leave just about a month before the elections were about to happen. The migrant crisis uh, continues to kill in and off the coast of Libya in the Mediterranean Sea. In recent weeks, there's been three shipwrecks. Uh, in two shipwrecks, we have about two weeks ago this was reported on december 21st uh there were a hundred migrants that were dead in one uh when a wooden boat capsized off the coast of libya and then uh three days later the libyan coast guard retrieved 62 bodies of migrants from another shipwreck and so you know when we're talking about retrieving bodies here we could say more than 160 died and that's certainly true but it, it could be a lot more you know they they could for whatever reason uh you know not get all these bodies and some people, uh, you know, just never be retrieved. This, uh, at this point, it had brought the total to over or around 1,500 migrants drowned this year. There was a, a third uh, incident where uh, 27 bodies were found off the uh, coast of Libya. And so uh, just a couple other overall numbers for this year, uh, 1,500 migrants drowning off, the, you know, leaving Libya, uh, around 31,500 uh, were intercepted and returned to Libya. Um, and then compared to the 2020 numbers of under, at least by their count, 1,000 migrants, 100 or 980 were died and then about 12,000 returned. And so... You know, there, there could be a variety of circumstances uh, that are, are led to uh, the definite increase, you know, doubling maybe or a little bit more of uh, attempted migration from Libya to uh, the, the Eurozone in the past year. It could be deteriorating uh, conditions in Libya, or it could even be somewhat more stable conditions in Libya. You know, if there's not constantly military fighting going on, it's a little bit easier, maybe a little bit cheaper uh, to, you know, get through Libya if you're trying to smuggle yourself through if you're undocumented or something like that and I definitely see you know that's being one possibility it also could be the situation in Libya is getting a hell of a lot worse and people are willing to do uh, a hell of a lot more risk a, a lot more in order to get out of the country. So I'll continue to talk about Libya on the show if, you know, legends move forward or fighting breaks out, whatever is going to, you know, happen now. But the what was going to resolve the situation in Libya seems to no longer be in play. And so we're, you know, going to enter a new phase in, you know, this, what, 10-year-plus war now that started when Obama, Hillary Clinton, Samantha Power 
kicked over Gaddafi and Libya uh, essentially for no reason and created this entire mess.